We'll start with the prayers. Om Sahana Vavato Sahana Obunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Ejasvinavadi Tamastuma Vedvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Panchadasi Nataka Deepa Prakaranam, the tenth chapter, consisting of twenty six verses. We have done nine verses so far. In the last verse, Swami Vidyaranya introduced the topic of consciousness the light of consciousness. The entire Vedantic literature is based on the spiritual light. There is one light which is shining in the entire universe. It is the same light which is there in our hearts, in our mind. Whenever that light shines, we are awake to the waking world or to the dream world or to the sleeping world. This point must be very clear because if you understand this spiritual light, this chapter will make a lot of meaning for you. And you will be able to go very deep into your mind. Each chapter of Panchadasi takes us deeper and deeper into our own self. But we should know what and how that has to be done. This is an intellectual process of going deeper and deeper, understanding the process of how that spiritual light manifest this universe, all the three universes, waking, dream, and sleep, for all of us. And how does that light unmanifest this universe for all of us? So manifestation, unmanifestation is what the Vedanta teaches us. According to very high advanced texts, this is the message. The world which we see is illumined by one light. Na tatra suryo bhati na chandra tarakam. This message, this verse comes in three Upanishads. Mundaka Upanishad, Katho Upanishad, Svetasvadara Upanishad. Very, very powerful mantra. We must keep that at the back of our mind. In a, whenever we learn the Upanishads or the Bhagavad Gita, which talks about pure consciousness, this point must be very clear that we are talking about a spiritual light not the physical light of a tube light or sunlight. These are all elemental lights made of panchabhutas. Fire is one of the elements. Sun is a representation of the fire principle. The whole universe comes from five elements. It exists in five elements, it resolves back into five elements. So in this chapter, we are talking about that light of consciousness, which is called as Satyam Jnanam Anantam in Taitri Upanishad. 
which is called as Uttama Purusha in Bhagavad Gita. And here Swami Vidya Ranya talks about that light being the witness. It is a witness to what? It is a witness to all the Vyavahara, the transactions which happen to all of us during our three states. We cannot analyze only the waking state and come to a conclusion about the truth of the universe. We must analyze all the three states of consciousness in order to come to a conclusion of what this universe is. Our rishis have gone to such a level of depth which a human mind can never go into. And these are the descriptions which we find in Panchadasi, a very, very beautiful text. And as you go through the, each of these chapters, you will find a joy in, your, in yourself because you feel fulfilled that you are going towards your destination. You, we all face life which comes in ups and downs. But in and through all these ups and downs, if we are able to keep our attention on this spiritual light of consciousness, we will be able to face our life better. And how do we do that is the process explained in this chapter. It's got a very deep significance. These verses are not to be just taken and read and, you know, kept aside. We must ruminate on them, think about the, the, the way they express, the way they reveal the truth. In the ninth verse, this light of this spiritual light is called as Sakshi, the witness. And it reveals three things simultaneously. How does it do? It, 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 it's, the way it operates is the same both in waking and dream. If you take the dream example and understand, it will be easier to understand the waking state. How do we experience the dream world? Do we first say there is an origination, there is a creation, and then slowly all these elements together came in, all that, do we experience that? No. We experience the entire dream world of the pramata, the dreamer, the prapancha of the dream world, which is the prameyam and the instrument through which we see the dream. All three are simultaneously projected at the same time. So similarly, in Vichara Sagara, it is clearly established. This waking state is exactly in the same way we should understand the whole process is happening in the spiritual light. And the way it happens is, it comes in the, in the, uh, the Vedanta, uh, science of Vedanta, through different verses, like in Dakshna Murti Stotram, and the Vichara Sagara and all this uh, uh, advanced texts like Panchadasi, they use the methodology of vrittis. They say there is a light. When that light goes through the mind or intellect instrument, which is a transparent instrument, purely sat sattvic by nature, which is our intellect, it's like a mirror. How the mirror is so, it can reflect sunlight. Similarly, 
our mind or intellect instrument can reflect this light of consciousness. The consciousness by itself is called as Sakshi. When that light goes through the intellect, it becomes a Pramata. So the waker I, the dreamer I, the sleeper I, put together is called as the ego I. That ego I is a same light of consciousness, but it is going through the medium, through the prism of our mind intellect instrument. And then we see the world of five sense objects. See means experience the world. So whenever the waker eye, the ego eye is experienced by us, the entire world comes into play. Our body, our mind, the whole universe of the sun, the moon, the galaxy, everything comes, automatically it comes. That is what is called as Maya. It is a very, very powerful instrument with this pure consciousness, Maya principle. This consciousness is called as God. The same consciousness is called as Brahman. As I said, there are many, many terms used, but all of them, they mean the same spiritual light. So in the ninth verse, we talked about how the Pramata, the ego eye comes up every morning. It comes up in all our dreams. And then this Pramata resolves in the Karana Shariram when we go to deep sleep. The play of the world, the play of the mind can be understood in this way only. If you want to reach the Sakshi level, you have to go through the three states of consciousness, which is beautifully described in Mandokya Upanishad. Whatever is the conclusion of the karikas of the Mandokya Upanishad, Swami Vidyarana tries to bring those lessons into Panchadasi. That pure consciousness, that pure light, is of a higher order of reality. This is another point we should note. Number one, that it is a spiritual light. Number two, it is of a higher order of reality. When I say higher order of reality, you must keep in mind the waker and the dreamer. The waker is of a higher order of reality. The waker can exist independently without the dream world. Similarly, that is how you should apply that comparison of waker and dreamer. You should apply it to the Atma and the waker, this ego eye. So the Atma eye is Paramarthika Satyam, a higher order of reality. The ego eye is of a lower order of reality. This is the second lesson you must keep in mind. These are all background lessons. If you don't have the background, you will not understand these verses. Because these verses have got this background already. When Vidyarane wrote this, he had all this in his mind. But in every verse, he cannot bring in the background. He has to go forward. When this light goes through the organs of knowledge, it is called as Nyata Jnanam Nyayam. Organs of knowledge means the eyes, ears, and all the five sense organs. When the same light goes through the organs of action, then what happens is 
कर्ता कर्म कारणम these are the words which are used they are all trying to explain to us what is our experience in life how do we understand how do i understand so you can see how deep vidyaranya is going is is taking that pure consciousness and trying to explain to us how does it express in the transactional world so with reference to the transactional world we are a pramata we are only a actor we are gaining knowledge of the world we interact with the world and whatever happens in the world affects the pramata it affects the ego i in and through all this ego i expressions the witness i the higher i the paramarthika i never gets affected that is another point you should remember it is unaffected sakshi so if this is understood then we have understood the ninth verse now let us progress and we'll go to the 10th verse the 10th verse is a continuation of description of the sakshi the witness is like the lamp in a dancing hall this is the first time vidyaranya is using the example of a dancing hall we are going to understand this example more and more as we go through these next 5 6 verses in this verse he only says that the light reveals whatever is happening in the dancing hall i see i hear i smell i taste i i touch these are all knowledge which happens through the five sense organs it are all happening in our mind they are all happening in the vritti form the light of consciousness when it operates through the mind it splits into five vritti channels sight sound touch taste smell so through these five beams as we saw in dakshinamurti stotram we cognize the world and all three are revealed all three means what pramata pramanam prameya how do we say this because our experience is the proof and this is and this is where we have to use the, what we have learned in the fifth verse of this chapter bondage is caused because there is no discrimination in our buddhi and this is to be handled by a seeker this discrimination that i am not the pramata i am the sakshi i that is what is our whole exercise in this chapter so we have to do the inquiry in this format i see i hear taste touch smell belongs to the pramata generally in grammar we use transitive and intransitive verbs transitive verb has an object intransitive verb doesn't have an object transitive verb i hear i see i touch these are all transitive verbs they have an object describing something i cry i sit i walk these are all intransitive verbs i see taste here is a unitary experience for all of us see the experience is one 
but it it is being described in three ways as pramata pramanam prameyam vyapara it is a transaction happening between the subject the object and the instrument so there are two possibilities for the revelation one is that the pramata reveals the three simultaneously what do i mean by that that means all of them they get an expression that is what happens to us as soon as you wake up your 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 light the, the light of consciousness shines and simultaneously in the same second you become aware of your body and the world so pramanam and prameyam they both become objects but they are all unitary experience but if they are not for example all the three pramata pramanam and prameyam they come into operation because of the shine of the sakshi i on the intellect so there must be a light this is what vidya ranna is trying to prove that how the sakshi is there which you which is a unifying principle for all three and he is using this he is taking the dream example and trying to say as it happens in the dream there is one light in which the entire dream is uh, seen experienced similarly the pramata pramanam and prameyam these are the, the ego i is one experience and this experience comes about when our mind wakes up the light in a dancing hall reveals the state of the hall the sakshi light reveals the state of our world in which we are expressing the light illumines in a hall five things what are the five things prabhum sabhya nartakam that means the dancer the stage and the orchestra we are going to see this in the following verses i'm just giving you a rundown uh, they, they will all be described very beautifully by vidyarana swami ikshe uh, the prabhu means the king who is there in a dancing hall like the yajamana he under him he is one who has instructed the dance to go on sadhya means audience the audience which is seeing the dance and then vidyarana will compare all this later on to what happens in our body nartakam means dancer ikshe shrunomi jigrami swadhyami sprishami aham so this aham this i when it is going through the sense organs it says i see i hear i smell and all this is knowledge of the objects the knowledge comes to the mind in the vritti form thought form the thought and the light of consciousness are interconnected like you have the beams the five beams the seven colors which come through a prism when one single light passes similarly here one light of consciousness when it passes through the prism of the mind instrument then i say i hear i smell i taste they are all the knowledge of the sense objects but the real absolute knowledge is the pure sakshi iti bhasate sarvam it is the thoughts bhasate means gets illumined the whole world gets illumined by the light of consciousness like the light in a dancing hall illumines the entire dancing hall including the dancer the stage the king the audience and the orchestra 
similar to that light is the spiritual light. The reality is borrowed from Sakshi. That means the reality of the dancing hall is borrowed from the light above. Similarly, the, light, the reality of the world which we experience, in the world is inert by nature. It doesn't have reality in itself, which we have seen in Bhagavad Gita in the second chapter itself. And uh, the same meaning Lord Krishna gives there. And uh, if you remember that verse, you should be able to uh, connect um, this verse and uh, with, the, uh, with that verse in the Bhagavad Gita. It is the 16th verse in the Gita. Nasato vityate bhavaha, na bhavo vityate sataha. So this verse, the unreal has no meaning. That means the unreal world has no meaning, no being, no existence. And there is no non-being of the real. There is no non-being of the real means that pure consciousness never goes out of existence. I'm explaining the verse 16 of the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. I'm just digressing so that you can connect it with this verse here. So the pure consciousness is ever there, always existing. And this is the point we all miss. Very important point. There is a light in this body which is always shining. Whether we are in the dream state, whether we are in the waking state, whether we are in the sleep state, only the objects revealed are different in each state, in each realm of experience. So the world does not have existence of its own that is what is called as satta. It doesn't illumine by itself. The world, including my body, including the wall and a table and a chair and the stones and the five elements and the pranas, they are insentient. In chapter three, Vidyaranya explains this phenomena of five koshas very beautifully. Anyway, we'll be doing that chapter later on. But here, we should keep in mind that the world is not, does not have the sentiency by itself. It is this light of consciousness which gives the world a meaning, an illumination, sphurati. Satta and sphurati, these two are not the properties of the world. They are the properties of the Sakshi. The world borrows this and then it goes to unmanifest condition. Again borrows it, again goes to unmanifest. See how beautifully, if you understand the Sakshi principle clearly, the whole Vedanta becomes very, very easy to understand. Every, every verse of the Bhagavad Gita, if you understand these principles very clearly, that is why I like this text, because it brings out the principles by which we can go to the depth of our personality. So if you identify with the mind, the ego, thoughts become compulsive. This is a very, very important point which we should, uh, which is, can be used by us in practical life also but it needs a little bit of practice. What Vidyaranya says is, if you are, there are two things happening in the mind. One is the thoughts about the world, and the second is there is a light which is illuminating it. There is a consciousness, there is a spiritual light. The moment I go behind the thoughts, then I get carried away by the ego eye. Then I suffer, samsara. 
But if I am able to, while being in this world itself, I tell myself I am the consciousness, I am the eliminating factor. The world is coming and going. This is how the discrimination has to happen. The world is coming and going. I am the light of consciousness. In me, the entire world is evident and it becomes non-evident. But I am the ever evident light of consciousness. If we are able to create the distance between in every experience of ours, between the presence of consciousness and the world, then the, then the entire spiritual study is over. Because then you just have to live in, it, in Ninidhyasanam with this principle in mind. Throughout our life, we just have to live with this principle. I am the consciousness in which the whole world is appearing in a thought form and gets resolved in the thought form. I, the consciousness, then you can apply all the things which we have learned in the Upanishads about all the indicators. Satyam, jnana, manantam, ashabdam, asparsham, arupam, agandam, all that you can apply. But this exercise is important. I am the pure presence. In my pure presence, the world is coming and it exists. I am the reality of the world. See how beautifully these verses, they bring out the truth. We have only rajas tamas, but we have very less of sattva. Okay, so that, that truth is not understood. Why? Because in my mind, the three factors are there. Prakriti, the, the mind is made up of prakriti. Prakriti is the, is the, uh, is the, is the five elements the substance behind the mind. Now that, it comes in, it, it, you know, there are, uh, we, were, we have all studied the chapter 14 of the Bhagavad Gita. And there we, have, we know that there are three aspects of this prakriti, prajas, tamas, and sattva. So our, we are so much engaged in the world, the rajas, which is nothing but desires and fears in our mind, they take us to the world. And tamas makes us identify with the body as I. So if I can slowly try to remove the rajas and tamas and then shine as sattva, then this pure consciousness will be known to me as my real nature. I'm explaining to you very, very deep, significant, significant things of Vedanta. How Vedanta looks at the world. How the world is made up of three gunas, which we have seen in the, in the uh, chapter 14 of the Bhagavad Gita. And how because of the overwhelming uh, nature of rajas and tamas, our sattva is hidden. And these type of texts help us to bring that sattva into full form. The incessant, incessant thinking creates a false mind, the ego as the self. These are very, very big lessons in psychology. So if I want to learn about my own self, that light of consciousness, this incessant thinking should stop. This thinking in our mind, which is a process which happens, and I, am, I, I have the ability to reduce that. That's what this, if I have the knowledge of the light of consciousness, without that knowledge, we cannot we cannot enter our mind at all. The doorway to our mind is the spirit, the spiritual light of Atma. 
लाइफ कम्स फ्रॉम आत्मा और अवेयरनेस लाइट द लाइट ऑफ अवेयरनेस द होल लाइफ वॉट डू वी एक्सपीरियंस एज लाइफ इज नथिंग बट दिस स्पिरिचुअल लाइट एक्सप्रेसिंग थ्रू द बॉडी so i need to understand that i am an awareful existent being the reality behind the ego i and that is what we called as sakshi i or the higher i when we do austerity like when we take vritams and when we follow certain withdrawal of the sense organs which is explained very well in the chapter 18 of the bhagavad gita the three forms of tapas satvik rajasik and tamasik when i become a satvik when i follow the satvik lifestyle then what happens is i am the master of the mind we all have to become master of our mind we all have to become master of our sense organs the day we say yes i have become the master then we are free that is what is the description the definition of a jeevan mukta jeevan mukta means what i am the master of the sense organs i am the master of the mind and how does this jeevan mukta really become a mukta because he has the knowledge of atma the spiritual light but if i am not attached to the light, to the light, uh, to the sakshi i if i am attached to the ego i then what happens is described in the right hand side block there is only pain there is suffering there are negative aspects in my life i become a karta i become a bhokta the french philosopher descartes says i think therefore i am we don't know that i am is the first i am first the sakshi and then i start thinking this philosophy i think therefore i am is a wrong philosophy it is an adhyasa the small i it is an adhyasa of the sakshi attaching itself to the mind to the thinker i am not the thinker i am the sakshi our small i which is the ego i has got too much commitment with the world therefore it is not able to withdraw i am a mother i i am a business i am a doctor i i am a lawyer i all these are all that smaller i is taking us away and we need to learn how to withdraw with the help of knowledge this withdrawal process is the vairagyam vairagyam comes with viveka the more viveka shakti i build in my mind the more i will be able to withdraw withdraw means not physically withdrawing only mentally withdrawing i only drop the identification with the body and the mind as me as the self in all my transactions i can live a life of pure sakshi big why because the sakshi level is at a higher level the vyavaharika ego i is at a lower level vyavaharika can still go on like in the bhagavad gita it says prishan chikran pralapan visrajan all the actions are happening why it can still go on because i am the sakshi so we need to build a different image about our selves with the help of the spiritual light the sakshi so when the ego is up it is a problem when the ego is down and we sacrifice in our life then what happens is we are one with the sakshi 
The thoughts are pregnant with desires, pain, fear, jealousy, greed. All these, our thoughts, they are all nothing. All these are nothing but thoughts. And it is these thoughts which are jumping up and down throughout, our, throughout the day. And then we, we as the Sakshi become identified with them. We need to cut off that identification. Know more about this light of consciousness. Patanjali's uh, Yoga Sutra, the, the second sutra in the first chapter itself, Patanjali is also a great uh, uh, you know, thinker. If you see the Patanjali, if you happen to see the Patanjali Yoga Sutras, amazing. The main amount of depth of knowledge you get in that. The human mind, very, very well, very beautifully analyzed. Yoga chitta vritti nirodaha. What is yoga? Yoga is nothing, but it is chitta vritti niroda. Chitta vritti means in the mind, whatever the mind takes as its forms. See, the mind stuff is only nothing, but it is a, it is, it is. Uh, the raw material for the thoughts, for the vrittis. This raw material can be used either for the perceptions or the raw material can be used for our own thinking process. And I have the ability to stop using this raw material as sakshi and stun the mind, stop the mind. This is what Patanjali says, and he says that is elimination of samsara. So we need to purify the mind by taking oneself to be the witness. This is the approach of Vedanta. We don't need to stunt the mind, but we need to purify the mind. How do we purify the mind? Only by shravanam, mananam, nididhyasanam, process. This is the Vedantic way of purification and arrive at the same goal of chitta vritti niroda. I recognize all thoughts as objects of awareness. These are all very deep thing, think, uh, they, they are all very deep uh, thinking which we are trying to understand. Every thought is an object of awareness. If you are able to do this, not even, actually you can, you can practice this to a certain extent, but first you should get the knowledge of it. This is what is happening in our minds. Then we can apply this knowledge in our day-to-day -day life. I'm not saying that we will be 100% successful, but the process, if it starts, it's a huge step. Because we are walking towards our destination. We are going, taking another 10 step in the right direction. Once the mind is connected to the being, it resolves in it, acquires calmness and strength. First is the knowledge of the self, that light, the spiritual light. And then the second is the withdrawal process of the mind towards this direction of Sakshi, which is what we are attempting in our meditation sessions every week. The golden rule is I cannot change what happens to the body and mind, but I can stop imagining myself to be the body and mind. This everybody can do. You just have to say, I am not this body, I am not the mind. Okay, and they, during the day, yes, I do get identified because that is the way prarabdha karma works. Prarabdha karma is nothing but the vrittis in our mind. They just come, we get identified with the body-mind, have our experiences, and again the next day comes. Again the next day comes. Like this, birth after birth after birth comes and goes. 
So the moment I come to know I am not the ego, what I perceive as ego is not the object outside, but it is I am the Sakshi. Then what happens? You never come in contact with the objects of creation. Transaction still goes on. All perceptions is nothing else but a sensation. This pure Sakshi or this light, when it expresses in the world outside, in the world of objects, it is expressing as pure existence. When it is expressing in the mind, it is the consciousness principle. Chit, Sat and Chit. This is the way I must understand. It is one light of consciousness. We go back to the beginning of the talk today, the I am the light of consciousness. This light is expressing as such. That whatever is the I see experience in the world is all existence, existence, existence. The table exists, the people exist, the tree exists, the, the, the nature exists, everything is existing. What I do is from this world, I take out the existence part. And I say, I am that existence. I am that pure existence. This is the way I go towards the light. I'm going towards the light of spiritual light. I am going towards my own truth. How do I uh, uh, do the same thing inside, the, my, inside my body? When I, am, when I have the thoughts, I ask the question, who is illuminating these thoughts? It is not the sunlight which is illuminating the thoughts in my mind. The subtlest elemental thing which is happening in this body is the thought. And the revelation of that happens because of the spiritual life. This existence is borrowed by the world. Like how? Like the chain, a ring or a bangle borrows the existence from the gold. Brahman imparts reality to the universe. That means this spiritual light, which we call it as Brahman here, it imparts sattva and chit to the world. Satchit is nirvisesha, it's not a particular knowledge, it is the pure knowledge of the self. The thoughts, they get the power of this sakshi. And this sakshi is called as atma. So I identify with the thought inside, then the power of atma is transferred to the thought. When you sit in meditation, if the thought comes, we must remember these things and say, I am the power. I am the light of consciousness. In me, all these thoughts are coming and going, like the waves in the ocean. I step back, then the thought becomes powerless. When I claim myself to be the Sakshi, then immediately you will find that the thoughts are withdrawn. These are all very deep Vedantic truths which are being brought out so that we can understand this light of the hall. See how deep Vidyaranya is using this example and how he is connecting it to the Sakshi. We need to be the illuminator of the body, mind, and not identify with them as the self. All analysis of the mind culminates in this Atma, in this spiritual light. I am Sakshi, the breath is Saksham. The breathing process which we have in this body is Saksham. I can identify with the breathing process or disidentify with the breathing process. In my meditation, I say, watch your breath. 
That means what? I, the Sakshi, am watching the breath. Then I say you hear the sound of O. That means I, the Sakshi, has stopped watching the breath. Now it is identified with the sound. Then I say, okay, now you withdraw. That means, can you see how the withdrawal is happening? I can withdraw from one portion of this universe and then go to another portion. This facility is there in me. I am that pure Sakshi. If I was not the Sakshi, I will not be able to do this. When I do this regularly, then I will know that I am that Sakshi and this becomes a reality for me. Today, the world is reality, but Sakshi is nowhere near it. But once you are able to disidentify with the world and identify with the world with the Sakshi, the Sakshi becomes real and the world becomes unreal. One part manages the physical body, another part manages the mind. They are all as per the laws of Prakriti. Prakriti is a very big topic to understand in Vedanta. Very big topic. Prakriti means nature. What does this nature consist of? Creation, all this, the theories which we use, uh, the, 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 the concepts of creation in the Vedanta, when, in, in the Upanishads when they come, you can understand how deep they are. In Tathobodha itself, we have seen the creation, how the Panchikarna process takes place and so on. Okay, so we have seen the 10th verse. I will just introduce the 11th verse. In the 10th verse, what we have seen is comparing the light of a hall to the light of consciousness. And light as in the hall, the whole hall is lit up and in that light we experience the experience the ex, uh, all the activities of the hall similarly in this spiritual light i experience all the activities at the body level mind level and the world level that was the essence of the 10th verse each of these verses you should go to such a depth then what happens in the 25th and the 26th verse of this chapter, the dialogue between the Sakshi and the mind will become very clear. The 11th verse, I will just explain to you and then we'll continue. I'll explain this verse next week. The light in the dancing hall uniformly reveals the patron, the audience and the dancer. Even when they are absent, the light continues to shine. This is a very, very important thing to note. When the dance program is finished, the light is still on and it is still illumining the hall without the dancer, without the patron, without the audience. The same thing is happening to the spiritual light in us. Every night when we go to sleep, the light of consciousness, which is our real nature, it is still there. It never goes out of light. Ever evident, ever shining light is ever present, continuously present, and it is illumining the unmanifest condition of the world. Very important point in Vedanta. We will see the deeper meaning of this next week. Um, so each, each week you can see that I'm doing one, one verse, maybe two verses in future, but they are all deep verses. While we go through the verses itself, I'm bringing out the entire Vedanta so that you can, every, every session, you can go deep into the light of consciousness.
which is our real nature. Om. Purnamada Purnamidam Purnahat Purnamudachade Purnasya Purnamathaya Purnameva Vasishade Om Shanti 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 Okay, there are no questions in the chat box. Uh, anybody would like to ask any questions as such? about specifically about this particular session if you have you can ask or if you have anything else you can ask yeah malati please go ahead namaste shekhar ji yeah, yeah namaste tell me today you had touched my favorite subject chitta yoga vratti chitta nirodha oh very good very good <laughs> that is not at all possible as i was saying to you that yes. Yeah. Yes. But now you know it is, it is something which we can understand through Vedanta easily. Yes, yes, yes. See, it's easier to do it through Vedanta uh, rather than go through the yoga method. Yes. And, uh, and Shekharji, and uh, from uh, since last 15 days, I came to the clear conclusion that Vedanta has the solution for everything. Good. Advaita has solution for everything. Yes. Whatever sorrow we have, whatever happiness we have, everything is just a mitya, just I am that. Yes, good. I mean, even today's session, if you go through it, right from the beginning till the end, if you understand fully this today's talk, it's very, very clear. Yes, Vedanta, yes, yes. Vedanta has all the answers which we want. Yes, yes. And let, have... us, let us just live with this knowledge. That's all. Yes. Uh, very happy. <laughs> Today I'm very happy. Very Thank good. you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, okay, Malti. Uh, anybody else has any other question or any other remarks? If there are no other remarks, I will close the session today. And uh, my question is, do you find these sessions very, very uh, difficult or is it okay you are able to understand? You can understand. Very good. Okay. That means this level of depth is okay for me to go on, right? Okay. What about others? Yeah, Rankumar. Sister Sheka, it's okay. I'm learning. Okay, good. I'm glad that uh, you know uh, I can understand that you are able to pick up. You are able to go. You see, if you are able to follow the uh, discussion, is good because then you can reach in your own way you can reach the depth of your own nature see the idea, the idea behind this session is to take your mind away from the world internally and then go to the light of consciousness okay, i'm learning uh, every day every okay day. very good yeah Ramkumar, I, I, i've got your message it's comfortable with the knowledge session okay so I will continue in the same way because I wanted to have a feedback so that uh, you are able to, so that I know that you are able to, to go with this line of thought. See, I can go a little bit faster and just explain the verse meaning, but I'm going a little bit more deeper. But I see that this depth is required if you want to know the truth. Every session 
compassion, you will be able to find that you are you are that spiritual light. I have something to ask. Uh, yeah. You know, we are only able to know how, uh, what is Atman only when in the dreaming state because there is light reflect from it. Other than that, we are not able to... Yeah, go ahead, Chandra. No, I was, I was thinking, in order to experience what is Atman, the, the light that shines during the uh, dream state is the uh, uh, is the only uh, uh, place where we can uh, identify with, uh, uh, Atman. Yes, Other you're right. That, it is easier. It is easier, easier to see because you know that that I will not be able to see that a uh, dream unless until there is a light. Yes. You should also apply the same light principle in the sleep state also. There was, you see, no. in, the, in the sleep state, what happens is that the whole world becomes comes to one undifferentiated thought. Right. And that thought also is witnessed by this light of consciousness. And then you have the knowledge of it. Yes, that is why the knowledge of Atma becomes more and more stronger and you become, oh, I am that light. You see, that, that realization comes only when you do this discrimination of the dream, the sleep. See, in the waking, what happens is the light gets mixed up into the, with the light of all the sense objects. Right. And therefore, I am not able to understand at all. So when I keep on looking at the world every day and you don't analyze your dream and you don't analyze your sleep state, then what happens is you are always living in a confused state of the world. Yeah, that is how they take it as real. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Therefore, we take the world as real and we say, what is this Atma? What is this Brahman? What is this? You see, nobody, uh, you see, especially newcomers to Vedanta, when they come to such talks, they get a very, uh, they, they don't understand. Yeah, yeah. But you need to have a proper step-by-step -step understanding. Then you can appreciate these talks. Yes, 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 very good. Okay, that's good. Um, okay, we'll continue next week with the uh, with a, a, a few more verses, and then we'll see how it goes. Thank you and good night. Good night. Good night.